In today's lesson, we're going to look at categorical variables and how to display them. And right now, let's go ahead and focus on graphs and tables for just a single categorical variable. And here's one of my favorite uh, graphs. It's a pie chart. See, percent of the chart that looks like Pac-Man, percent of the chart that doesn't look like Pac-Man. I like to start my uh, lessons with something humorous. So anyways, first of all, I know most of you have seen bar graphs since you were in middle school, probably even elementary. But let's go ahead and go over the parts of the bar graph just to be clear. So first of all, you always have the graph title that tells you what the graph's about. And then you have the name of your categorical variable. Um, that means you have a category. So here we have food type, and these are the different categories of food types. So what type of food do you get for lunch? All right. And then, of course, you learn that the height of the bar is actually your frequency. How tall that is tells you how many people elected that option. And the main thing, one thing you might not have known, is that we'll also be doing histograms in our next lesson. And these bar graphs have a gap here. All right. Histograms don't. Histograms touch. So that's how you can tell them apart. Otherwise, a histogram and a bar graph look a lot alike. So, all right. So I took a, peer, a survey of my first period class to determine favorite lunches, and I graphed the data. So this is from some actual data. They're the most common method. Bar graphs are the most common method for displaying categorical da data. And some of the characteristics include the graph title, um, which is, it's, by the way, you can use the survey question. That makes a great graph title. Then the responses are the categories at the bottom of the bar. All right. And if an individual can respond with more than one category, so if I allowed my students to say pizza and burgers, then their responses would be counted in the corresponding categories. So it depends. Sometimes you let that happen. Sometimes you don't. Categories can be displayed in any order. You can do it in alphabetical. So we put gaps between them because they're not continuous. It's not like, oh, after burgers comes pizza. In my case, I think I put tacos after burgers. If categories are displayed in descending order, this is called a Pareto chart. And categories are allowed to overlap. So sometimes I could have a survey where I could have someone click more than one thing. So percentages, when you add all of them up, might be more than 100% if you're looking at percents. Now, if the bars are horizontal, and I don't do a lot of horizontal graphs, and I don't see a lot of them, but they do occur, then the axes just switch. So the categories are now vertically, and the frequencies are now horizontal. So we're going to go ahead and take this bar graph that I had for my first period, and make a frequency table. So you can see I had four responses for burgers, four for tacos, two for nachos, one bagel, and two for pizza. I was surprised pizza was that low. I guess the tacos must be pretty good. So how many students do you think responded to my survey? Well, it's tempting to think that there are 13 students because when you add these up, there are 13. But we don't know if students could vote in more than one category unless I tell you how it worked out. In reality, they could only vote in one, so there are 13 students. But be careful. You only know that because I told you. All right. Now, the circle graph or pie chart is a great way to compare responses for categorical data as well. I mean, you can use bar graph works, but a lot of people love circle graphs, which are also known as pie charts. The categories cannot overlap in that case. So if I'm doing a response and I allow you to pick both pizza and tacos, pie chart or circle graph is not the way to go. Relative frequencies need to add up to 100%, and you can use either actual or relative frequencies when you do it. So it's all going to work out. Now you can label each slice or use colors and a legend. Um, whichever works, but people need to know what each section on your graph represents. So Tanya asked her classmates how many pets they owe, and the responses are in the table. So I'm going to go ahead and do a circle graph, and I could do these responses, and when I add them up, I get 24, so I could like cut this up into 24 slices and then have six for none. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do relative frequency. So to do that, 6 divided by 24 is 25 percent. 12 divided by 24 is 50 percent. 4 divided by 24 is 16.7 and 2 divided by 24 is 8.3 percent. So um, I usually try to do the easiest piece first. I see a 50 percent and I can, since I have a center on this chart, I can do 50 percent. By the way, don't forget to put your title. So cutting the circle in half, I can do that. All right. So one of those, that section I'll say is one to two pets. Now I need a 25%. Well, that's actually pretty easy. That means I just cut this piece in half right there. And then this piece, you can look at it from here or from here. You can see one piece is twice as big as the other. So I'm guessing it's going to be kind of like here. And that's the big piece and that's the little piece. And you don't have to be exactly right on these, but kind of in the ballpark. And then label your sections. There's one to two pets, which is my 50% slice. Then no pets three pets and four more pets. So again, I know you've been doing circle graphs or pie charts since middle school, uh, maybe elementary. So hopefully you'll find that they're pretty easy to do. Um, do avoid 3D pie graphs or even the pull out pie graphs because it can distort the perception of it. So keep, in, keep your graphs simple. Don't go all fancy on me. All right. Now you can also make bar graphs from relative frequency. So here's a bar graph when I change the burgers, the tacos, the nachos, the bagel, and the pizza to percentages, right? I think these are about 31%. And how does this compare this to the original? Well, if you're looking at that graph on the front page, it looks exactly the same, except for this vertical scale right here. It looks identical except for the, the numbers. The heights look the same. The proportions are the same. It's just the scale. All right. So some conclusions from bar graphs and pie charts or circle graphs. You are expected to come to conclusions. You're expected to describe what you see from these graphs, like compare one ca category to another. Okay. Um, 3D pie charts are sure cool but they distort the slices. So avoid these at all costs. Pictures should be proportional to the frequencies they represent. Okay. And be careful. Again, a pictograph is usually one of the worst things you can do. Not having the axis start at zero can make small differences look larger. And you can always use this little symbol here to show that the scale is broken. So you can kind of be a little more honest, say, Hey, this isn't starting at zero. So looking at my three examples here, this is obviously the 3D pie chart. And 33.8% looks like it's more than a third, doesn't it? Looks like more than a third to me. It's just a little distorted. It seems off. Um, that 3% looks small, but 3% would normally look small. On this, this is a pictograph. And so here, the sales are 10,000 and then they just doubled the height of the carton to make 20,000. So this is supposed to be double that. But here's the weird thing when you go with area. If you double one way, guess what? You double the other way. And so your area is four times bigger. So it, this looks like we sold four times as much milk here as we did here or that we sold a quarter here of what we did there. When in reality, this is supposed to be half of that. So be very careful with pictographs. They look awesome, but no, avoid. All right. And then this one is they did some, they were testing some software to see if it made a difference. And so they had a pretest and a post test. And you can see here that clearly using the software, it's much better than traditional instruction. Or is it? This starts at 50, not zero. So those, these differences are maybe not as big as they appear. So the axis is broken. They didn't use a little thing. So that's a bit misleading. 